so I have it across uh, a story in the Wall Street Journal, uh, and this is going to dovetail into some local stories uh, that we have about housing shortages and evictions and things going on that we'll get into a little bit later on in the show. So I, I did want to let you know that this didn't, uh, we didn't invent this topic whole cloth. There, there is a, a local tie to this. But some people are saying, why don't we buy a home with a best friend? We're best friends. Let's go in on this home together. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could be a good idea. I, I think there are definitely reasons it could be a good idea, but I, you and I both sat down, and we both agree that there's there's more bad ideas. There's more cons to as opposed to pros all on right. this one. So right, I'm going to have you do the goods. I'll, I'll do the cons. I'll whip okay? through the, the pros here. But wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Before we get to this, oh. is there something that we can agree on? If you're going to say, yes, this is a good idea, but you should do this. And I'm going to say, no, this is a bad idea. But if you do this, it should be better. I mean, what what are the things you would have to go into? It's a bad idea, but if you're going to do it, at least. Well, I think it, I think it could work for some people. Mm-hmm. And again, Wall Street Journal, I found another article, too. I think it was in Fortune, uh, Forbes, uh, that had some other people where it, it did work out. But I think there are some ground rules. I think that's a good part is set the ground rules in advance. Yeah. When you say, what would you call something like that? A prenuptial I'd agreement. I'd say like a legally binding agreement. Have in paper, either we're going to evaluate this every five years or every year, whatever it is. Know what each person is contributing. Have several things. Have those four or five things worked out ahead of time. Isn't that like setting boundaries? Like, we need to know what these things are. And then, as Joe and I were discussing in the in our rehearsal, what about a line of succession? So if anything were to happen to me, mm-hmm. what happens? For instance, I, I talked with Pablo here, and Pablo said, hey, if anything happens to me, I don't want my my renter getting my house. He, he gave it to me. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, yeah, he did. He gave it to me. He said, just... Sell it and give some money to my brother, and you're good. And I, I huh. appreciated that. That's the huh. kind of that's the kind of love that we have together. Look Man, at him. Look at, look at how nodding. benevolent Pablo is. And that's I'm not making that up, am I? No. Nope. We had that conversation. We had. Yeah. You gifted your house to Chris. Uh, passed it down. Wow. This isn't a scenario. If something happens to me on my way home. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that would be terrible if anything happened to you. Now that that's on record. Hmm. That would be terrible. And it's not like Pablo wants anything to happen to him, <laughs> ever. I think it's important to have uh, both people... Ground rules. ...on a legal document, too, when it comes to the house, it's the mortgage. I think mm-hmm. both people have to be responsible. All I right, agree. So why might it be a good idea for you, if you want to buy a home, to buy it with a friend? Joe. I'll whip through these here. Let's start simple. Affordability. Maybe you don't have that 20% to buy a home. Maybe you've got 10%. Guess what? Two tens, Chris, make it 20. All right. I think that's the most obvious reason, Mm -hmm. right? Okay. The mortgage. Many mortgagees will average credit scores. They'll look at combined income. So as opposed to buying that fixer-upper, you can get something bigger and newer. Okay. So mortgage, get bigger, better, newer. Okay. The bond. It can make a friendship a great friendship. You talked about BFFs. No, it, it can cut this it way. It can. It can. Don't be, no, I don't will be reluct- glass half empty yet. I will reluctantly give you that point. Yep. Never will you know so much about someone as when you live with them. Hmm. And unlike when an apartment breaks, it's on you to get stuff fixed. What brings two people together more than YouTubing how to fix a faucet? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Doesn't that just say, no, we're talking about our best friends? That's, that's personal because no, I tried to fix it's Joe's not, faucet. No, it's not. And I made it worse. No, you did not. Second set of eyes, Chris. Uh-huh. Owning a house can be a lot of work. You can't be home for all those appointments. They're going to show up and set up the cable between 12 to 5, but you can only be there till 2. Okay. Guess what? I've got you two till 5. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. That's just too big of a window for you. Now you've got that person to have your back. Somebody that you can flip that coin with. Maybe you're going out of town. No better alarm or person to feed your cat than that person who you own your house with. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Investment. The American dream didn't look like it did in the 80s and 90s. Now, if you want to own a home, you might need somebody to start, uh, you know, condo or townhouse or, or go in on it with someone. This friend who you can go in with on the house, they're a shared investor. You're both building equity through your investment. So two, two people gaining or loneliness chris i know you're okay. a, a lonely man at times a lot of lonely nights mm. i know i have lonely nights no more loneliness now we can sit on the couch and netflix together mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. 
but you know the truth is I generally enjoy my peace and quiet. But yeah. but if if you're asked about that, you're like, no, Joe's the obnoxious one. He doesn't like the peace and quiet. It's almost but, like he's making my point for me. No, no, no. Loneliness, Chris. It's uh generally it's a bad idea to try to do co ownership. Bad idea. Yeah, it's generally a bad idea. Why is that? Let me encourage you not to do it. Hmm. And I had never really thought about this topic until I heard somebody call up Dave Ramsey one day and say, Dave, I'm thinking about buying a house. And he said, in fact, I think it was, I'm buying a house with my fiance. Mm -hmm. And Ramsey said, you're stupid. He said, why would you do something so dumb? Exactly what he said. He said, wait until, wait until you've got a binding legal document. Like you're married. You together. Yeah. yeah. He said, don't move into a house. Don't buy a house together. Don't make joint investments until you're legally joined. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. And a lot of that comes back to when I, the, the legally binding agreement. I think a lot of people, when it comes to co-ownership, they would go into that investment as friends. Common goal. Everybody's in good faith. We're going to own a home. We can do this together. Yeah. And you can't look at it like that. And here's where people go wrong from the very beginning. They say, we are going to own a home together. You can't. You have to say, we're going into business together. You have to look at it like a business arrangement. I know you're going to live there, but there's going to be a binding legal contract, and that's all about business. When you go into it, you have to weigh all of the circumstances because there is too often inequity at the start, right? So inequity between partners doesn't work because you're unequal people trying to have an equal partnership. Mm -hmm. For instance, Pablo and I, if we were to buy a house together, that's not fair because Pablo has a lot of money he's sitting on. Mm. He inherited a ton of money, and he he also gets that indigenous money, right? He is a suavecito, yeah. Yeah. So he gets the the oil money. Mm -hmm. that That's here, too, right? I mean, Alaska's got that, but you get that, too, right? So Pablo comes in with King Solomon's gold, and I come in with a weekly paycheck, Mm. right? So if something happens... I'm going to look at Pablo and say, hey, man, the you sink's broken. Me, right? The sink's broken. Are you going to fix that? Mm. You see? So all of a sudden, the, there tends to be this inequity and this assumption. There's going to have to be some very raw conversations about setting boundaries to start with. And one of the things I would recommend, if you are considering going into co-ownership with somebody, is don't make it 50-50. Don't do that. Because you're going to need a decision maker. Remember, look at this as an investment. Don't look at this as a as a, a joint two buddies doing something together. Hey, let's split the tab at dinner. Mm-hmm. That's not the case. Think about it like an investment, and you need a final decision maker. Suppose that there's a, a, a leak in the roof, right? Mm-hmm. Pablo and I have a leak in the roof. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I go, Pablo... I've taken a look. We're going to need a new... I brought the roofer out. The roofer said, this is one leak, but you've got more. This roof is 25 years old. You're going to need a new roof. Okay. Pablo says, I can't afford a new roof right now. Why don't we... Uh, patch it. Why don't we patch this one? And I I've say, Pablo... I've got some duct tape. This is the time that we got to fix this. And Pablo goes, no, I can't afford to fix it right now. I don't want to fix it right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now, who wins that argument? Because now the roof is going to get worse. And if the roof gets worse, it could do more damage, right? So you need somebody who's got the decision-making ability, even if that's 51% to 49%. Better would be something like 70-30, yeah. right? And that way, I don't resent Pablo when I go, I'm putting more money into fixing the roof and you haven't done anything. Pablo goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're the guy who's going to make more money at the back end of this. It's only right that you put money into the front end of this. This is definitely where it gets sticky, though. Thanks for watching The Chris and Joe Show. Click to see more from Chris and Joe. And tap the button in the middle to subscribe to KTAR News.